Hey everyone, today I'm going to be testing what life would be like if we lived in two dimensions instead of three dimensions. So life as we know it exists in three spatial dimensions and one time dimension. So three spatial dimensions means that we can either move this way, this way, or this way, or some combination of those ways. But what if there were only two spatial dimensions? This and this and nothing else. Well, we could actually simulate what that would look like. And I discovered this is a good method for simulation when I was doing a video that I called drawing on water. Let me show you what I did. So this drawing on water method ends up leaving you with a picture that's floating on top of the water. So it's basically a two dimensional picture that you can move. Using this technique, let me show you what it would be like for humans to live in a two dimensional world instead of a three dimensional world. There's actually more problems than you think. So the way I'm doing this is by utilizing the main ingredients in dry erase markers. So dry erase markers contain alcohol, a release agent with some silicone and some ink. Once you draw on your surface, the alcohol evaporates and it leaves behind a silicone layer. So silicone is less dense than water. And so when you pour water on it, the water layer slides right beneath the silicone and they repel each other and the silicone floats to the top. And then based on the comments in my other video, people were saying this could be a new animation method. But the only way you could animate it before is by wiggling your water, and you can't really control them that way. You just get to see them move around. But I thought of a way that you can actually make animation on water. So it turns out the magnetic silly putty is exactly what I needed. Since it's silicone, it sticks to the silicone in the marker, and since it's a magnetic, I can control it and manipulate it with a magnetic field using a magnet. And this very thin layer of pigment or ink at the top of the water is a very good simulator for two dimensions because it's at the very surface of the water, almost like the skin of the water. So two layers cannot overlap each other. And so it simulates two dimensions that can't overlap. There's no depth to it. Okay, so first let's test how difficult it would be to move around in two dimensions as people. So my two dimensional people are just gonna be stick figures to keep it simple. So let's say this is our two dimensional planet. Now in this two dimensional planet, there's still gravity. So gravity is always down pointing towards the center of the planet. So what would it be like for somebody living on this planet? Well, let's draw our person. Now let's see what it would be like getting around on this planet. So at first walking along this two dimensional planet, nothing seems that odd. So let's say this guy's walking and suddenly he encounters a pole sticking out of the ground. What can he do to get past it? Well, because he's in two dimensions, there's no going around anything. The only way to get around the pole is to go over it or under it. And because it's unlikely that you'll have to dig a hole under everything, he's most likely gonna climb over it. So if life existed in two dimensions, it would actually be pretty difficult go over if it. you weren't able to fly. You would end up having to climb over every single thing you encountered. So this would be very similar to the original Super Mario Brothers. So in Super Mario Brothers, remember Mario has to jump over every obstacle that he encounters. That's what it would be like living in a two dimensional world. Except in Super Mario Brothers, Mario can actually go down tubes. And that's not realistic for our two-dimensional world because he wouldn't be able to slide down a tube in two dimensions because the layers can't overlap. What about the actual life forms in the two-dimensional world? What would they look like? Would a human body be able to be in a two-dimensional world? Well, let's take a look at that. So if we were in a two-dimensional world, it would have to be just a slice through our body. So let's take our two-dimensional body here, a slice through the center, and here's our simple anatomy in the body. Remember that we have a stomach in the middle and we have a tube where the food comes in and a tube where the food goes out. But you might see a problem here. Let's see what happens when we pour the water on this and see what happens to the body. <laughs> you can see that it just starts to float away. So the problem with a human body in a two-dimensional system is that our digestive tract bifurcates the body. So tubes don't work out in two dimensions. It basically just separates the two halves. 
So we wouldn't be able to have a digestive tract in a two-dimensional world. Basically any living thing that has a tube in it wouldn't be able to exist. So really the only living things that could exist in a two-dimensional world would be things like single-celled organisms or organisms that don't need tubes to bring nutrients to them. But what about the formation of the molecules themselves to even make up cells? Could that even happen? Could atoms even form in two dimensions? Well, the problem with atoms or molecules forming in two dimensions is that atoms depend mostly on the electromagnetic force. And in three dimensions, the electromagnetic force, it varies based on one over the radius squared. And so as you move two charged objects away from each other, the force drops off very quickly. But in two dimensions, the force would drop off by one over R. So the force would continue to stay a lot stronger when you move objects away from each other. So it's most likely that molecules and even atoms wouldn't even be able to form in two dimensions if we still had the same universal constants that we have in today's physics. So if atoms and molecules couldn't even form, does that mean that nothing could live in a two-dimensional world? Well, not exactly, because it depends on what you mean by living. So the famous mathematician John von Neumann, he defined life as a creation which, number one, can reproduce itself and number two can simulate a Turing machine. And the second one is a little hard to understand. Simulating a Turing machine just means that you can take some input information and using some predefined set rules, you can get an output from that. And so using John von Neumann's definition, actually there already is life in two dimensions and it's called Conway's Game of Life. So Conway's Game of Life is a grid of square cells where it's only possible for one of the cells to be in two states, either living or dead. So if the cell is lit up, that means it's alive. If it's not lit up, that means it's dead. And in this grid of squares, there has to be four rules that are followed. And the rules are that any live cell with fewer than two live neighbors dies as if caused by underpopulation. The second rule is that any live cell with two or three live neighbors lives to the next generation. And the third rule is that any live cell with more than three live neighbors dies, as if by overpopulation. And then the fourth rule is that any dead cell with exactly three live neighbors becomes a living cell. And this simulates reproduction. And so what you need to start Conway's Game of Life is you need a creation point or a seed pattern. And so you get to decide that. So you choose your initial points that are living and then you just follow the rules of the game of life and it becomes its own living autonomous like system. It's pretty cool. So if you start off with the right things, first you can make things called still lifes and these are things that don't change over time. But you can also make things called spaceships or a glider. So this is a glider and when you step through the rules, it starts to move across the page. Or you can make things called oscillators. And these are shapes that oscillate back and forth when you step through the rules of the game. So when you get more elaborate patterns, you can make some really cool stuff. For example, this is called a Gosper glider gun. Even when you just set up a random pattern, the pattern develops on its own and becomes its own living like system. It's pretty neat. For example, here's a random system where I just hit start and let it step through the rules and look at the results. And if you don't set up something random, you can get some really amazing results like this one. So can something live in two dimensions? My answer is that yes, something can live in two dimensions but it's definitely not the type of life that we're used to thinking about a living system in three dimensions. I thought you guys would want to join in with me for something on this episode. We're gonna hit a million tonight. Let's sit and watch it go over a million together. Okay, here we go. 999996. Come on, four more, three more. Nobody unsubscribed. Two more. Almost there. Come on. Come on, hit that subscribe button. 
Oh, look at that number, 999999. There we go, one million and one. <laughs> we did it. That is awesome, guys. But I just want to thank everybody who subscribed to my channel so far. I never imagined it could grow as fast as it has these last few months. So thanks a lot for subscribing. Stick with me. I have some awesome videos coming up. I know you'll love. Thanks for subscribing. And if you're not a subscriber yet, remember to hit that subscribe button and you can hit the bell to be notified when my latest videos out. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.